behavior management. The purpose of this training is to provide parents with a basic understanding of inappropriate behaviors, strategies that can be used, and tools to prevent or respond to these behaviors. When problem behaviors are not dealt with early, they're difficult to change, a child is unable to work on other skills, the family is stressed, extra supports are often required but unavailable, the child gets older, bigger and stronger, social impact with peers, and difficulties with school integration, participation and learning. Behavior is an observable and measurable. It includes any action of an individual, everything people do and say. All behavior serves a purpose and can be appropriate or challenging. Some examples of uh, challenging behaviors would be uh, physical aggression towards self and others. Uh, so they could be hitting, kicking, biting, uh, throwing things uh, at people. They could be banging their head on the floor, on objects. They could be biting themselves on the wrist, the hand, um, just anything uh, that is physical in nature. Uh, they can also shout, scream, um, throw temper tantrums. You can also have inappropriate laughing or giggling. Uh, when, even when the context isn't really appropriate, uh, they'll just do like a, a, a giggle or a laugh for, for no apparent reason. And whenever you say things, uh, the laughter will just get worse. They can also be puzzled or confused. Uh, you have to remember that children with autism have uh, a a great difficulty with communication skills. So their inability to understand or be able to communicate with um, parents, siblings, uh, teachers creates a lot of problems and uh, often resorts in some sort of physical um, uh, release of frustration or some sort of behavior. They can also not have eye contact or the, the they, most parents would say that they ignore uh, when they ask them to do something or they're not listening. Uh, but it may not be just that, it's just uh, their lack of eye contact. They can yell or shriek just for no apparent reason. Um, often that can be also a self-stimulatory um, uh, behavior because they, they like the sound of their voice, but it also can be a reaction to uh, a demand or uh, something in the environment that they don't like. They can have an inappropriate attachment to objects. Um, that means um, they can't function basically without certain objects and if you lose that object it can often manifest in different types of behaviors. You may not associate that behavior with the object, but often uh, they will react when the object's not found or they don't have it close by. Many autistic children are tactile sensitive, either uh, they're hyposensitive, meaning they uh, need very strong physical touch to be able to react to it, or they react to just the slightest amount of ch touch. Um, and many times uh, children that are hypersensitive to touch will react negatively to uh, touch. So that means proximity can be an issue. Um, hugging, they, they generally don't uh, like it and they, they avoid it at all costs. But it can also manifest in uh, some difficult behaviors as a result. They can might have marked physical overactivity or extreme passivity. So extreme overactivity is basically um, running from room to room or pacing back and forth, or jumping up and down, or um, opening and closing doors or windows. Uh, extreme passivity, um, an example of that would be um, just sitting on the couch, not wanting to get up, not wanting to go outside, uh, not basically not wanting to participate in the daily routine or the activities of everyday life. And the big one that most parents uh, often experience is uh, crying tantrums, where the child, ex uh, where the child uh, has extreme distress for no discernible reason, at least according to the parents. Usually, there's always a reason for it, but it can. Um, be anything and if the parents don't necessarily know what the reason is they won't be able to fix it. So why should we address challenging behaviors? 
A behavior should be addressed if it affects the child's health, learning, and social development. But first we need to understand the behavior. So the antecedent is anything that occurs before the behavior, the behavior is anything that the person does, and the consequence is what happens after the behavior, so the reaction to the behavior. Well, let's go through a scenario. So Jennifer's mother asked her to clean her room. Jennifer screams at her mother, runs upstairs, and slams the door to her room. Jennifer's mother does not follow her upstairs. She leaves her alone and does not make her clean her room. So the antecedent, which is the event that occurs before the behavior, this also includes aspects of the physical environment and the behavior of the other people. So in the example that I just gave, Jennifer's mother asks her to clean her room, is the antecedent. The behavior, which is the action, verbal or physical or both, of the person. So in the example that I just gave, Jennifer screamed at her mother, ran upstairs and slammed the door to her room. The consequence, which is what happens right after the the, uh, the behavior is the event that occurs after the behavior. This includes aspects of physical environment and the behavior of other people. So in the example, Jennifer's mother does not follow her upstairs, she leaves her alone and does not make her clean her room. In order to deal with challenging behaviors, first of all we need to understand why the behaviors are occur occurring and if there are any reinforcements that continue. People with autism can often be overwhelmed by their senses. Sight, sounds, smells, and even light or touch can be felt more intensely by someone with autism. People with autism also find it very difficult to communicate. It can be difficult to understand what people are saying to them, and they might also find it difficult to talk or communicate with other, other individuals. Therefore, it's very difficult for them to express their needs, their wants, or their desires. Not being able to express what you want often leads to frustrations. One thing that is very important for everyone to remember is autistic students, um, for autistic students, uh, behavior is a means of, com of communicating and it's not a means of misbehaving. So when you have parents saying, though, he's just stubborn or he's not listening, that's often not the case. In order to deal effectively with challenging behaviors, it's very important to understand the function of behavior. The first thing that parents or professionals have to take into consideration are any medical or physical issues. Any of these issues needs to be explored first with a doctor or a medical practitioner to see if they're the cause of any of the behaviors. Once the client's uh, basic needs have been uh, assessed, uh, then you can look at whether they're doing the behavior because of escape, attention, uh, to get some sort of tangible item, or because they're self-stimulating. If a child is uh, doing uh, his behaviors uh, because of escape, you need to ensure that structure is appropriate for the child. You need to evaluate the difficulty of the task. It might be too hard or too easy for them. Uh, you need to evaluate the strength of the reinforcement. So reinforcement would be uh, something like, uh, do they like doing that activity anymore? Have you done it too often? Um, you usually always pair a, a harder task, like taking out the garbage, for example, with something that they like afterwards, like playing their favorite video game or going to the park. But if you've d used it too often, then it can often lose its efficacy and it no longer becomes valid. You need to follow through with your extra expectations and instructions and also a, using a token system or a reward system or timers can also be uh, useful in uh, managing behaviors. Uh, if your child is uh, having behaviors due to attention, you need to ignore the nonverbal uh, cues. Um, you limit your uh, eye contact with them as well as your verbal contact with them. Uh, you provide attention for the positive behaviors um, and so try to reinforce them as frequently as possible. If your child is having uh, behaviors due to uh, a tangible um, object or a tangible reason, um, you might need to use differential re reinforcement of alternate behaviors, um, which means um, you might need to um, provide a greater uh, reinforcement for more positive behaviors or the closer to uh, the behavior that you want the child uh, to be at, the, the more reinforcement that they get. 
uh, functional communication training is um, you're teaching your child basically how to communicate their basic needs um, and that could be using sign language or pictos, gestures, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, token systems can also be effective um, given that uh, over a period of time the child will get uh, specific smaller rewards, usually a token to be placed on a, on a board and after uh, a certain number they will receive a larger reward. So for example if they um, do their homework every day for like three days then after three days of doing their homework appropriately without having a tantrum they will receive a bigger reward um, like uh, maybe going to the park or maybe going to McDonald's or whatever you decide. If the behavior is caused by self-stimulation um, you can often have a, a sensory assessment uh, by an OT to just determine why they're, they're doing that behavior if it's related to any sensory needs and then they can develop a program to satisfy those needs. You can often redirect the child to another um, activity that will provide the same sort of sensory stimulation as the, uh, the behavior that they were doing. For example, a child that jumps on a bed or jumps on furniture, you can provide them with a, a trampoline or a, a bouncy exercise ball, which sort of gives them the same vestibular feeling, but in a more appropriate way. Uh, you can also use differential reinforcement uh, when the behaviors are not there. So when they, they increasingly don't have less and less behaviors, the reward becomes more and more. Now that we have the what and why of the behavior, we can figure out how to manage them. To help with behaviors, first we need to learn to recognize the signs of anxiety and confusion presented by the persons with autism. How should we intervene with behavior tantrums? First, back off and give them time to regroup. Stop all talking, do not try to force or explain. Allow the child to go to their calm space to calm down. Or we could not have any physical contact Try to redirect the child with something of interest, something that they really like to do. Allow the child to just sit calmly or read, and do not force eye contact or, or any responses. Then, what about communication? It's really important to make it visual. Visual supports organize a sequence of events, enhancing the child's ability to understand, anticipate, and participate in those events. Visual supports supplement verbal instruction information for the child, and increasing comprehension. Supports can be used to cue communication, provide reminders of what to do and say in a situation. So usually we use communication, what do you hear yourself saying over and over again? Make it a visual communication. And what do you hear the child asking over and over? Use a visual communication. Throughout the day, visual supports need to be portable so they can go wherever the child goes. Throughout our lives, once the child is successful, we may be tempted to remove the visual supports, but experience has shown us that as children enter a new environment and face new challenges, it's much easier to modify existing visual supports than to reintroduce new supports, which have, which, or reintroduce supports that have been taken away. Independence is our goal. Visual supports promote independence by providing visual cues which can eventually be used by the child for self-prompting. Verbal cues alone can create dependence on other people. In order to enhance communication skills, uh, autistic children may need visual schedules uh, using pictos. Uh, either they can be cartoon images or real pictures. Task lists, uh, such as a morning routine, what they need to do in the morning to get to school or communication binders, which is uh, basically for mostly non-verbal children in order to help them express their needs. Uh, mini schedules can also break down uh, an activity into more manageable steps. Uh, they are used in visual form uh, and they're usually uh, a type of task analysis. Uh, examples of other routines with, which lend themselves well to a mini schedule uh, are washing dishes, circle time activities, assembly task, uh, cooking tasks, and bathroom routine. Communicating the concept of no 
often the questions we hear children asking over and over are receiving a negative response. So rather than getting caught in the no game, we recommend using the universal no symbol. And that's usually a, a picto with a, a, the circle with the line through it. Or you tell the child what he can do uh, using a choice board. Giving choices uh, whenever you can uh, will we'll give the child uh, a sense of uh, control. Um, being able to make choices, and even the simplest, uh, is more empowering to the child and increase their positive behavior. You need to look for opportunities to present choices uh, whenever you can, whenever you're trying to teach them or whenever you're playing with them. Make uh, choices visual with pictures, words, or the objects themselves. Key points to remember. You need to be aware of what is reinforcing the challenging behavior and that may be reinforcing in the future and you have to try to avoid it. You need to be consistent. You need to follow through uh, and they need to also follow through with what you ask them. Uh, you need to always reward the positive, uh, whatever it is. Uh, it could be numerous times during the day, it could be once a day. But whenever they're doing something that is appropriate, rather than the alternative, you need to say something or do something to acknowledge it. Uh, you try to deal with the behaviors when they first occur. So you don't wait half an hour or even 10 minutes. You need to deal with the behavior right away in order for the child to make the connection with the behavior and what you're asking. You need to plan ahead. That means, um, for example, if a child is really, uh, they don't like crowds. Uh, try to avoid uh, going to the malls when it's really, really crowded or going to the park when it's really, really crowded um, just to avoid certain situations. You also need to choose your battles. Is it really important for them to uh, put their shoes in a specific place or uh, make sure that all of their stuffed animals are put on a shelf that you choose? Um, you need to be patient and don't give up because uh, behaviors uh, take, take some time to, to dis extinguish themselves. And uh, if you give up, then they often come back twice as bad. When possible, allow your child a sense of control. So like we were saying, provide as many choices whenever appropriate. Don't take it personally. Uh, this is a hard one for parents to understand because uh, when a child doesn't listen to you or has a temper tantrum, most parents take it personally and it's hard not to. But you have to remember this is, this is their reaction and it's also in your control to reverse it. You need to redirect the inappropriate behaviors to more functional ones. So, um, for example, uh, jumping on the couch. Um, they, they could jump on a ball. Uh, so it, it's, it's the same sort of behavior but it's in a more appropriate way. Um, and don't be afraid to ask for help. And the last but not least, uh, you need to remember for a child with autism, the behavior that you see on the outside may not necessarily what is, explain what is happening on the inside.